Okay, we're in chapter 12 of Exodus, verse 1. Please, anybody. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month is to be for your first month. The first month of your year. All, tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of the month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one of each household. Okay, hang on one sec. Here's what happened. We're going to go through 12 months here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, originally the first month of the year was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Right here. The month of Tishri. Okay, that was the first month of the year. This is the month that God created the world. Okay, and then it's the month that Noah... Um, landed and they were on dry land. Okay, it says on the first day of the seventh month of the whatever year. Um, and I just talked about this last week at Rosh Hashanah because I just wanted to give all the times in the Bible that this was listed. It's also mentioned in Ezra, it's mentioned in Nehemiah, this particular day, the first day of the year. And I'll show you kind of an interesting parallel before we get back to where we are and why God did this. But here we have, oh, I'm sorry, um, seventh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, that's correct. Um, uh, it's a little confusing what we're going to talk about here real quickly, but the first word of the Bible is be ro sheet okay? All right, that's the first word of the Bible. be sheet bara Elohim. This is be in, and then rosh would be the head, and or in the beginnings, okay? Sheet would be like a plural, I guess, in the beginning. Okay, so yeah, be sheet And then if you take this same word and you make an anagram out of it, Aleph, uh, let's see, Aleph, Be, Tish, and that's a Tav, not a He, Tish, um, Tish, Re, okay, same letters, you just make an anagram out of it, it says the first, because they don't use numbers, they use letters for their, uh, their system, Aleph is the first letter of the alphabet, so it's number one, Aleph, Be, Tishri, the first of Tishri which is this month. So the first word of the Bible makes an anagram telling you when God created the world. Bereshit, Aleph Betishri. Okay, kind of just an interesting little parallel. But what God did is he said, this is no longer the first month of the year for you. And the only reason why I'm telling you this is because from this point on, there are times where it gets confusing in the Bible unless you know this now. God said, this is now the first month of the year. Um, and right here, it's called the month of Abib. Okay, that's the name of the month. We're going to see that in Exodus chapter 13, I think the fourth verse. It's going to tell us that Abib is the name of the first month of the year. But this is the time of the Passover. And so God says this is to be your first month of the year. Okay, don't want to confuse you too much. But later in Ezra, uh, Esther, verse uh, 3, 7, I think it is, the name is changed again to Nisan. It's the same month, but this is the Aramaic Okay, as a matter of fact, Rhoda, the, the girl that's married to Sergio, the Jewish guy that plays the piano in here, his wife Rhoda is Arab, okay? They still call it Nissan to this day, all right? Anyway, or maybe, uh, is it Nissan? But she also knows Abib. Anyway, I was talking to her about this a couple days ago. Anyway, this is the name from the Aramaic. So when we get to the book of Esther, all of a sudden, it's going to be from Abib to Nisan. It's the same month. The reason why I'm telling you this is so that as you're reading the Bible in the future, you don't get confused to what's going on. Here's another confusing thing. and It's better I do this now, and then we talk about it again to reinforce it. You have in the land of Judah, when a king is coronated, okay, they don't go by the day that he's, um, you know, his father dies today. He's actually coronated on the first of this month. This is the beginning of what's called the regnat year, or regnal year. Reg, we'll say regnal, but could be regnat too. The regnal year, the reigning year of the king. It begins from here. But at other times, I think in the, the uh, uh, Samaria, I may be wrong on this, the reigning year begins here. So you've got all of these different dates going on, and it makes it confusing. And people will say there's an error in the Bible because it says that, well, I'm going to make this up. This is not in the Bible. I'm just making this up. This is King, um, uh, King. Uh, we'll call him King Gene. I didn't want to say King David because then nobody would understand I'm making a joke. But King Gene becomes the king and it says King Gene ruled in uh, uh, Judah for 18 years and three months, right? 18 years and three months. Okay. 
But if you read in, the, that, this is in the book of Kings, but if you read in the book of Chronicles, it might say King Jane reigned for 17 years and 6 months. And you say, well, there's an error in the Bible. That's not it at all. This guy that wrote the Chronicle is using a different time frame than the guy that wrote the Kings. And if you line them up on a chart, it comes out perfectly. Sometimes he writes from the day the king took over because the father is still alive. Like when King Uzziah went and he presented incense before the Lord and he got leprosy, right? He can no longer serve as king, so his son took over. So it's a, there's a term for it, and I'm forgetting it right now, um, where you're the, the, the reigning king, but your father's still alive. Anyway, I'm forgetting the term. The what? Abstention. I think that's it. Abstention. So he's reigning. So in this instance, they give him the longer term, but from his actual coronation, it's from a later, or from when his dad dies or whatever. This guy, Edwin Teeley, if you ever want to read it, it's called The Unusual Dating of the Kings of Israel. And he did his doctoral thesis on this. You know, some guys write doctoral theses on why puppies are yellow or something. This guy really did something with his life. And he went through all of this, and it's all charted, and it is what you were saying in your prayer. It is perfect. We don't need to think, is there any error in God's word? We have the error because we misperceive what's being said here. And it takes somebody with diligence to study these things out. So I'm blowing this, and that's why I said King Jane. But uh, anyway, there's all these things going on. What we're reading about right now is the Passover month. God has changed the first month of the year from here to here. Later, it's going to be called this. I'm telling you that just so that you know later when we're reading the Bible, that, that this is going on, okay? So it'll say from the first, on the, the second day of the first month of the third year, are they talking about from here, or are they talking about from here? Or, if you're in the book of Ezekiel, it'll say in the 30th year, it's not talking about anything except his age, the 30th year of his life. So you have to know what the context is. I know it's very confusing, but God... Here's what somebody said about the Bible. I read this quote recently, and it just, it really touched me. This guy said, um, uh, I think I even quoted this in a sermon, but I may not have. He said, um, if somebody showed me the mathematic scale, and you know, mathematics is very involved. You've got physics, you've got uh, calculus and geometry and all these different things. He said, if somebody presented the mathematic scale to me, and he said, this is God's word, he said, I wouldn't believe it because it's far too simple for an infinite being to give us something like that. In other words, what we have here, and the arrogance of man says, oh, that's just the Bible, and I've read that. I don't need to read it again. This has got more information in it than any other book ever published in human history. And we will be studying this book for eternity. If there are things like this in here, and they found a couple of them, there would be... Somebody did an analysis of just the Old Testament in the Hebrew because you've heard of the Bible codes. I'm not saying they're real. I'm not saying they're not. I, I, you know, that's, if they are real, we're not supposed to tell the future anyway, so who cares? But if they are real, they said that if you were to have just those characters and be able to do with the Bible codes, if it's real, it would have enough information in there to fill up the entire universe. Okay, well, if that's true with just the Old Testament with 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet, then how much more the entire Bible taken as a whole? And here's an example to help you put that into perspective. How many letter codes are in the DNA structure? DNA. What's the guy, uh, Microsoft, Bill Gates, said that if I could write a program as complex as the DNA structure, we could solve every problem. I don't remember the exact quote, but he, he, he said it would be, there, there's nothing we couldn't do. You know how many letter codes there are in the DNA structure? A, G, C, T. The entire DNA structure of every living organism in the universe is based on four letter codes. Imagine if the Bible is real and it really has 22 letter codes for the Old Testament and 24 for the New and then you combine the two, 24 and 22 would be uh, 46. I I infinite amount of knowledge in there. All we have is just a surface knowledge, and we find new stuff all the time. We find new chiasms. How many have we found in this ch class alone? How many? Right? So it's unbelievable what God has given us. Anyway, enough, enough of that, but I wanted you to understand what's going on with Nissan and Abib. Okay? This month shall be your beginning of months. You are no longer to use this as the beginning of the month, the month of Tishri. Now, what is the first month of the year in Israel right now? Tishri, because we just celebrated it last week, right? They now say this is the beginning of the year. So they are not following the biblical 
pattern. Some of the Jewish, I think, Messianic, or maybe the rabbis or something, maybe they follow a religious year based on what we're reading here. But the nation as a whole is not following what God ordained at the Passover. Okay? So they have this, yeah. My Bible has that calendar like you were talking about. Oh, good. So it gives all of the month. E-R and, uh, let me see, yeah, Elul, Av, Av. Tammuz, Ethanim, which uh, the month of Tishri, just so you know, it's kind of funny. I said this one time in class and it kind of embarrassed my brother. This month in the, uh, uh, this is the Aramaic here, but the name originally was the month of Ethanim. And that's my brother's name. Well, I am is plural, so I said this is the month of Ethans. Anyway, <laughs> there you go. But yeah, it's got all of the, all of the months and it breaks them down. Uh, Tebet, Shebat, Adar, yeah, all of them in here. And then here you'll see in hers it says the second Adar. Okay, what they have to do, might as well tell you before we go on, because this is how the calculations will go, and we'll do some of them in the months ahead. There are how many days in the Hebrew calendar? I mean in the biblical calendar. Give you a hint. There's 360 days in the biblical calendar. Okay, how many months are in the biblical calendar? I'll give you a hint. Okay, so there's 12 months in the biblical calendar, and there's 360 days. Okay. So that means that every single month is exactly how many days? 30 days. Okay. How many days are there in the current year the way that the world is set up? 365 and then we have to have in another one and all that. So what they have to do now in order to have the Hebrew calendar match our calendar because the world is not in the same shape that it was when this was written is they have to add in a second month. It's called an inter intercalu intercalary month. Yes, thank you. I can't even pronounce the word, but anyway, they have to do it nine times every 17 years, I think. It, Is that what it says? It says uh, this intercalary month was added about every three years, so the lunar calendar would correspond to the solar calendar. Right, about every three years, so I think it's nine times every 17 years is what it averages out to. Whatever, it's about every three years. They add in this month. It seems goofy, but it's the same thing we do with our calendar. We add in one day every four years, and we're still off by a few seconds, so eventually they'll have to have another... Uh, they'll have to have a second leap year. That means Hidako will get two birthdays in one year because my wife was born on leap year. Anyway, so actually, I'm a pedophile. I hate to say that. <laughs> She's only 15 years old, you know, or 14 years old. And I've been married now for 28 years, so well, I, I shouldn't have said it the way I did it, but, you know, it's kind of a joke. Anyway, yeah, we're just kidding there. But anyway, yeah, she was born on the 29th of February. She's registered. What happened is she was born in Okinawa, so they put her on a, a cart, and they had to take her down on a, a donkey cart or a goat cart down to the town. So she was actually registered on March 1st. That's her official birthday. But she was born on 29th of uh, February. Anyway, but here's what they do. So don't think this is strange or anything. They are just aligning their year with the proper cycle the way we do. They just add in an entire another month, okay? Every, nine times every 17 years, whatever it is, it's something like that. Okay, so, but that explains that. And I'm glad that Bible has that because some Bibles do and some don't, but it's really interesting. If you understand the months and the dating system of the Bible, then you will have no problem. And we are going to get into some really, really great mathematical calculations in the months ahead. I've already done them maybe in this class, maybe not, but it'll be a good reminder. Anyway, that was a lot of information for just one verse, but uh, I apologize about that, but I want you to understand why things happen. Even if you don't fully grasp it now, at least later you'll say, I know there's something and it'll help you as you study. So go ahead. Oh, before you do, on the 10th, I'm sorry, on the 10th of this month, because I forgot that we read verse three, T uh, of this month, every man shall take him for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. Okay, on the 10th. And then we're going to finish up, and then after that, uh, we'll talk about the significance of this. Go ahead. Okay, if any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with the nearest neighbor, having taken into account the number of people there are. You are to determine the amount of, the amount of lamb needed in it accordance with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be year-old males without defects. And you may take them from the sheep or the goats. Okay, without defect, obviously this is kind of picturing Jesus. He's a lamb without spot or blemish, according to, I think, 1 Peter. Uh, uh, it, it said elsewhere in the New Testament, he was without fault, he is blameless, etc. So this is prefiguring, obviously, the work of Christ. It's to be no older than a year old, it's to be in the first year. 
and uh, this is going to be the Passover lamb. 